Hello, and welcome to the Revived Yarns podcast. You can find me on Instagram as Revived Yarns, and I haven't posted there super frequently, but I will, I promise. Anyway, I am wearing a finished object, and I will insert a video now of me wearing the full thing. Um, it's not completely finished, but it's finished enough. Here is my DRK Everyday Sweater. Finished, blocked, but ends not woven in because I wasn't sure that the sleeves were the right length, but they've locked out beautifully. They are perfect for me. Uh, it's in Reclaimed Merino that I plied quite a while ago, actually. And I actually cast on here and worked down, and then I picked up and worked up for the neckline, which I'm really glad about because <clears throat> the number of stitches you cast on for the neck, I knew it would stretch out. And I wanted to make sure that I had a good high neckline so I could wear it over t-shirts. It is perfect. And I love it. And it took me nine days to knit. Okay, I finished that in nine days. Um, I swatched for it. I actually got that yarn out uh, because I had applied it. It felt kind of, I don't know, it was a heavy and kind of ropey. It was three or four strands of reclaimed merino. Um, and the way that I applied it, I just applied it all together without doing a, applying it one way and then, or twisting it one way and then applying it the other. So it was kind of heavy. So I was actually doing some swatching, thinking that I would make like a basket or something out of it. Um, but then I really liked the swatch and I thought, you know what, I can do a sweater. It is heavy, but I can't really tell when I'm wearing it it's heavy and it's super drapey and turned out beautiful. I have two, I think two pretty full skeins left. I haven't actually weighed them. Um, so I might be able to do something else in it as well, or maybe some color work or with something else. So yeah, that was super fast. Um, I also finished my, my daughter's tank top. So I did these little granny squares. It, it's in the True Boo by Lion Brand, I think. Um, so I did a big granny square and then little ones for over the shoulder and in the front. And, um, and then I knit the front body of it and just connected it to the back. I was trying to do a add on as you go while I was knitting and it was way too difficult so I just did it back and forth and then seamed it which works um it is slightly tighter on her than I'd planned so I don't know if this she'll actually get much wear out of it <laughs> but um it can go over little dresses or something if she wants and then I finished spinning stuff that was all the knitting I did like I said in the last few podcasts I have not had a ton of mojo. I feel like every project I've started, I've ripped out. Um, so I did some spinning. So I had made some white bats with a big, a bunch of different fibers. It was um, quite a few blends. I can't even remember now, but it was cotton. And I think there was some flax or linen or something in there um, and wool. And I spun this which has been washed and it's really nice. It's got a lot of variation in it with the dark colors and I have a whole bunch. I also have not weighed or measured how much I've done, which I should, but you know, when I cast things on, I just kind of follow my heart. But spinning that was, um, I actually, it's funny because I really like doing woolen spinning. So from bats or from fibers that aren't all aligned. And so roll legs, I really enjoy. Um, I've discovered I didn't enjoy bats as much as I thought I would. Oh, there's Rocco. He's checking out the window. We have neighbors are doing roofing. So it's very, there's a lot of activity out there. No barking, hey? And another thing that happened, um, we got a second dog. This is Max. He is a menace and he, I, I, it's probably the white fur, but he is constantly dirty and he really likes to sleep, like 
sleep up here in the windowsill behind me. So my curtains are filthy all the time. I think I need to switch to darker curtains because I don't think I'm going to take them down and wash them. Hey, no growling, no barking. Hey, no growling. What are you even growling at? The flowers moving in the breeze, very scary. Then I had um, someone I know send me a sample of a California variegated mutant sheep known as CVM and so, or some fleece. Um, so I flicked it, we used hand cards and I, got, I mean, this stuff is amazing. And if I ever get the chance to buy a fleece for CVM, it, it's so nice and it's so squishy and like the bounciness of it is amazing. <sighs> yeah, so nice. And then I got, while I was at Fiber Fusion in Monroe in beginning of June, I had purchased some fiber that was really nice. And it's like, was all different rainbowy colors and I spun it and then I plied it with two bats. Oh my gosh, will you stop? <laughs> it's just growling back there. I plied it with, um, there were two bumps of fiber that I got. I think I got one at Fiber Fusion and then I had gotten one at the Whidbey Island Spin-In. And they were, they were really nice, but I didn't have enough of either one to do anything. So I actually held them together and spun them and then plied with this one. I think I had seven or ounces of the colorful one. And so, I had a bunch left of the brown, way more than I expected. So I did, it just plied with itself. Um, I also have not been good and taken the other ones off the bobbins, but I need to do that soon. So I have my bobbins free again. And I also did, I had some, what was this? Oh man. Now I can't remember. I've been terrible about taking notes about my fiber. I don't know why. Rocco, you cannot have this. No, you cannot. I know. Get out of here. Um, I let them out of their kennels because I have to go pick up my son at 11 for a doctor's appointment. And that's only two hours of it. And then they have to be kenneled for a while. So, uh, so I made a boucle. This was, it's very soft. Man, I wish I could remember what it was. I, I probably have it written down somewhere. But I think I got it, it might be the Jacob actually that I purchased at Fiber Fusion from Skagit Woolen Works. That sounds right. And then I applied it, I used a purple cashmere. Yeah, there we go. To do the, you, with boucle, you do a, the original spin, the brown is what I did. And then I used one strand of the purp of a purple sewing thread to wrap it around and you do the little bumps to make the boucle. That might be a better picture. And then you have to use another fiber to ply it back with to lock in the bumps. Otherwise, as you're knitting, they would all just scoot around and move. So I used the cashmere for that. And it turned out really nice. I have two skeins of it. And last podcast, I showed um, some green boucle that I had made. They're pretty different fibers and have a really different feel. Like these are super soft and the other ones were kind of scratchy. So I'm not sure if I can use them together. But I need to figure out something to do with them because it's really nice. And I haven't actually knit with boucle, I don't think. So I'm not sure why I keep making it, but it's fun. And then I have... Let's see, I'm trying to keep them separated because some of these have been washed and set and some of them have not. And then also at Fiber Fusion, from the same place I got the colorful stuff, I purchased just some plain undyed. And I did this yarn, which is a two ply. Yes, two ply. And I got this much. And I might use it with the colorful stuff. Um, well, I don't think I need it actually. Yeah, there's another yarn. And I really need to start like putting on what it is. 
because I'm having issues with that. All right, so that's all the stuff I finished, I think. So all include and finished was I frogged the Elwyn pullover that I was working on that was in the reclaimed merino because I tried it on and it the body was huge, like way too big. So I ripped it back to the, to before into the yoke and I did fewer increases. Um, and then I started knitting again and I knit probably a couple of inches and then I tried it on again and it was still huge. And I don't know because you increase every round and all the increases like stack up and they make, cause you do, you don't increase on the sleeve. So you cast on as many sleeves, as many sleeve stitches as you need in the pattern. And then there's just, you cast on every round at the yoke and it creates this really nice look, but for the back, it just gave me too many stitches and I couldn't, without ripping it out completely and reworking the math, it was always going to be not fit right on me. Like it was so bunchy and ripply at the back. Rocco is trying to walk on my leg right now that is on the footstool. Um, so I just ripped it out because I, I wasn't gonna be able to get something that I liked, I didn't think. But that's okay, I will use the yarn for something else. In fact, I did some swatching because I was thinking it's kind of boring yarn, it's just gray. Um, oh my gosh, dog, hi. I bought this sewing thread in rainbowy colors and I was doing some swatching with it. And I might actually use this to do some plying with it. Um, I don't know if I'll go full boucle, but yeah, I'm gonna experiment a bit. Um, I got it on sale at Joann's, so it was like $6 for 1,200 yards of cotton. So not bad. Not sure why he's doing this to me right now. So another whip is my cotton, another boucle. I found a whole bag of cotton fiber at a thrift store, and I decided I wanted to make a boucle. And it is turning out really great. Like the cotton is an absolute pain to spin. The fibers are so short and it takes so much concentration and it takes adjusting my wheel multiple times because for some reason my wheel doesn't, the brake band doesn't stay. And it might be, maybe it's the 3D printed bobbins, but these are Magicraft, like they're official bobbins. And maybe they're not 3d printed no I, I don't know what they are but they're official bobbins but for some reason like my brake band just starts breaking more um and so it pulls the fiber on too fast and it rips it on my hands and it breaks it and so then i have to loosen it but then it's super loose for a little while and then it gets tied again but i want to use up this cotton and so i'm using a reclaimed cotton from a sweater to do both the ply to make the little bumps, these little, they're like little worms, and then to ply it back with to lock the, the bumps in. So I really like it. I've got another bobbin of the cotton done and I probably need to do two more. My daughter actually said she wants a sweater out of it. So I'm not sure about that. Cause I was thinking, um, I got the spinner's book of yarn design from the library and saw some boucle woven and it looks great for towels but i also think this fiber the cotton fiber in this is too short and it would be really linty which nobody wants a linty towel so a sweater might do instead and then underneath this pile of stuff once again i was not prepared just trying to get this done because I've been meaning to do it for a while. I started a musclerg. I had this yarn. I found it at a thrift store. Um, it's a sock yarn of some kind. Um, and I did socks with it, but I held it with another sock yarn to do like worsted weight socks. So I still had a ton left. So I thought I would try the Musselberg and it's not a super tight gauge because it's gonna be double layer. So I have a, 
about another inch, inch and a half to knit before I do the decreases. And I still have this much. So I, have, I think I will not be playing yarn chicken, I hope. And I'm really enjoying it. I kind of, I've seen so many people making them and I kind of held off because I was like, I could probably figure that out. I don't need to buy the pattern. And then I kept not wanting to, like I would cast on and I didn't like the, cause you have to cast on at the top of the hat or the top of one section, increase and then knit and then decrease. And I tried different increases for hats and I didn't like any of them. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna buy the pattern. Cause they have also, she's made it so, uh, the Musselberg by Isolde Teague. Yeah. She's made it so you can use any weight of yarn, any needles. So it's very versatile and I think I will use it a lot. So I figured I'd just buy it cause she's done all the work for me. And even though I could figure it out, do I want to? And I decided no. And then I have a hand spun cardigan. This is one that I started trying to do um, during the summer. Here's the dog. That when I have like no motivation and I kept casting on and ripping it out and I didn't have enough yarn and so I ordered more fiber because it's hand spun and then it was like slightly different colors and it, it felt like nothing was working. So when I finished my DRK everyday sweater that I was super motivated to work on, I don't know why, cause it's not like the yarn is very interesting and the pattern is pretty basic, but really easy to follow. Um, I discovered that I had forgotten that I cast on um, something I was designing on the fly. So I did seed stitch in the darker yarn for the collar and I, let's see, I knit this way and then I picked up and knit that way. And then I picked up the stitches for along the back of the neck. And I think around to the, just about here. And then I knit down from there while also knitting this. So it's a intarsia front bands, um, button bands, but I'm not doing buttons. I don't think I'm going to do any closure on it. Um, and so I'm doing intarsia. I just wrap the yarn. You can't even tell like in, intarsia is super easy and it's actually having a resurgence. It seems there's a ton of patterns that use intarsia, uh, but you just wrap the yarn and knit with one. Of course, what it means is I have to have three balls attached at a time, which is a nuisance. So it's not going to be a travel project, but I split for sleeves last night and it's on huge needles. These are 13s. Yeah. Nine millimeter. Uh, so they are super noisy too, but I'm really enjoying it. And I can't believe I forgot that I had like figured out a pattern because I ripped it out so many times that I thought I was going to open up the container it was in and just find something I would have to rip out and restart. But I really wanted to use this yarn because I spun it just for this, for a cardigan, because I need more cardigans. So yes, um, hopefully I will not be playing yarn chicken, but I do have some other hand spun that's not it's not similar enough to use straight in, but I might be able to use it for the bottom ribbing or I'll probably do seed stitch on the bottom as well. Um, yeah, we'll see. I just hope I'm not playing yarn chicken, but it's like eating up yarn so fast, but it's also growing really fast. This is my problem is I just follow my heart. And as Grace Babbler said on uh, Instagram the other day, that heart doesn't know how to do math. Okay, so those are my whips. I only weirdly have two knitting whips right now because I haven't done anything else and one wait and one spinning. So I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I don't think I am. I have an on the go cowl that I keep in the car for if I have to wait anywhere. Um, I think I showed that, showed that on a previous podcast, but it's just, I'm just gonna be knitting for a long time on that because I don't actually have to wait very often anywhere, which is nice. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I plans are, I am going to the Pacific Northwest Fiber Exposition 
in Port Angeles at the end of the month. So the 29th, I will leave um, after my son gets on the bus, but before my daughter does, my husband's taking the day off um, and to do kid wrangling and puppy wrangling. And I'm gonna go and take a hand painted dyeing workshop Friday afternoon. And then Sunday or Saturday morning, I will be taking a Viking knitting class. It's wire weaving. Um, hopefully they don't cancel it. Apparently there's only two students who have signed up. So I hope they don't cancel it on me because I think it will be interesting to try that. Uh, and I'm from that area. So I'll be staying with my mom and hopefully meeting up with some friends and we will be doing, there's several other people from my spinning group going. Uh, so we'll probably hang out and spin for a while or knit. Um, I'm going to try not to purchase too much stuff because I do have a lot already. But I also will purchase stuff if I see something that I really need. Um, I might actually go through my, my fiber and see if there's anything that I want to fill out with stuff. So that's my podcast. Uh, check me out on Instagram if you want or don't. You can like and subscribe if you want or don't. Um, hopefully I'll do these more regularly now that summer is over and my kids are back in school, which has been very nice. They are loving it. Well, my daughter's loving it. My son is tolerating it. Um, he has a new teacher this year. A lot of times with in the special needs classes, they have the same teacher for all of um, several grades. And through middle school, there he was supposed to have the same one, but she moved. So it's a new teacher and he seems to be doing really well. So that's good. And yeah, we've got two dogs now, so it's crazy. My floors are always filthy. Max is five months old and um, he and Rocco play constantly. I might try and insert some videos at the end of this of them playing and running around. So thankfully we have one of the robot vacuums, so we just run it every night. And then I try and mop every couple of days. Uh, this winter is going to be terrible. Like as soon as the morning dew started settling on the grass, so they go outside, their feet get wet, then they run through the dirt pile or start digging in the yard, which these dogs love to dig. Um, and it's an issue. We have to go fill up holes every couple of days. Especially because we have a huge section in the corner of the yard that is just for them to dig. Like it's all dirt. We've shown them that they can dig there. They've dug a couple of holes there, but they also want to dig in the middle of the yard. They want to dig in my flower beds. My vegetable garden is blocked off so they can't dig in that at least. So yeah, it's life's been fun. Um, pretty good. I can't think of anything else. I'm really looking forward to my little break um, and going in, being around fibery stuff. So I hope you have a wonderful week and find something, a project that really brings you joy. And I'll talk to you soon, hopefully. Bye.